oh my, we're here, and you're there, and we're together, and that's what counts. A pleasure to be with each other, and uh, we're back with more questions than answers. Yes, chapter 3 of Exodus. So, uh, Moses is out here in the land of Midian, and he's going to have the experience of his life. How about that? Number one, what was Moses doing for his father-in-law Jethro? He was taking care of his sheep. Sheep herder now. That's a long way from what he was experiencing in, back in Egypt. And he was out here for 40 years. Now, you know, that's quite a time to learn a new way of life. Next, where did Moses lead these sheep? Well, he went out, to, he led them out to Mount Horeb, and that's considered to be the mountain of God. So, what do you know? Out here where he's going to lead another grouping of sheep a little later on. God's people. What experience did Moses have here? Well, he had, it was quite an experience. He saw a bush burning, but the strange thing was it was not being burned up. I remember reading this and learning this in Sunday school, and I expect you did too. It's one of the biggest lessons that we learn when we first go to church as children. What happened when Moses came near this? Well, he heard a voice. It was God speaking to him out of the bush. Oh, my. What did God tell Moses to do? He said, Moses, take off your shoes because you're standing on holy ground. I'd imagine Moses had never been told that before. My, oh, my. What a voice. Was Moses afraid? Yes. Uh, I would have been. Yes, all of us. What did God say to Moses? Well, he said, now I've heard the cry of my people, and I'm going to send you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt, Oh Moses. my. Don't you suppose he rethought 40 years ago when he got in trouble in Egypt? What was Moses' response? He says, well, who am I that I should do this? Yeah. My, oh my. What was God's answer? Now he said, Moses, I'm going to be with you. Now that should have been enough, but is it always enough? No. <laughs> when, we, uh, when we think about it, so much of the time we, we uh, feel like we're on our own. So we have to listen to this lesson too. When Moses is concerned about who is sending him, what does God say to him? Now he says, tell the people that I am has sent you. I am has sent you. What does this mean? Well, he said that I am the God of Abraham. I will always be, for I am unchangeable, always. Yes. This has always kind of bothered my understanding. And after a time, you kind of forget it again. It is a difficult something to think about. I am sent you. So I, I guess God's always trying to make us thinkers out of us. I am. But you remember, he was always saying, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Three generations of offspring. Quite a period of time. So I guess he's trying to let us know that I am who I am. No matter what, I change not. I am forever the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and throughout all time. Anyway, what does God now instruct Moses to do? Well, with the elders of Israel request of Pharaoh to let us go three days into the wilderness to sacrifice to God. Yeah. 
this is going to be something to experience, and I, I guess I'd hate to be in Moses' shoes, though uh, I might hide out in his breast pocket and go along for the ride. But quite a time was coming up, and we know that because we've read ahead. Just a couple more questions here in, in uh, chapter 3. What does God predict at this time? Well, he predicted that Pharaoh will refuse and that God will show his wonders in all this. Yes. Now, it does tell us off and on that God hardens his heart. But God can do that because God is God. But at the same time, you have to know that this man was such a reprobate that God perfectly had a right to do what he did. Last question. What does God predict about their departure from Egypt? Well, he said, now they will leave Egypt and not go empty-handed, but they're going to spoil the Egyptians. Take, yes. Take stuff with them. Yes. And that happened. So God was going to look out for the people. They took a lot of their riches, and uh, that was going to be used for different things in the future. God always looks after us in all the angles, whether we realize it or not. So folks, this has been a good lesson, and we look forward to uh, another one coming up shortly. You might read ahead in the next two or three chapters, four, five, and six, and we'll be back. And uh, I just really look forward to this, and so does Nancy. Yes, indeed. So uh, I guess we'll say goodbye.